Good to go. Yeah, good. This is Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store. Delighted to be joined here in London ahead of the Joshua Franklin press conference. Joe Markowski, my first time interviewing you. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having us down today. Um, just first things first, Joshua's first fight on the zone comes back against Jermaine Franklin. You must be so excited as a business for the plan in the future. Yeah, listen, we've worked with AJ for, for five years um, internationally, mainly in the US. We've always had an eye on working with him, obviously, in his home market here in the UK. We're a business that's from the UK, so it's extra special for us, and we've managed to get it done. I'm very excited about it and very excited about what it can do for our business in the UK. First things first, obviously, on the opponent, Jermaine Franklin, we saw just on the zone in November, he put in a great fight against Dillian mm. White. Um, I think it was uh, it went down as a loss, but a lot of people thought, you know, he'd done enough to get a draw or his hand raised in that fight. Just spoke to Eddie now. That's the reason that they believe it's a good comeback fight for AJ. Do you reiterate those comments? Yeah, and I think that's the reason he moved up to the top of the list. There was a list of opponents that Team AJ, Matchroom and DAZN were considering. Uh, Franklin was on that list, but I think he moved way up that list by performing as well as he did at the back end of last year against Dillian White. So, yeah, we're, we're excited about it. I think it's the perfect comeback fight for AJ. Clearly, we've got a broader plan with AJ. We think he's got, you know, three or four fights to get himself back to where he belongs at the top of the heavyweight uh, world rankings as world champion. We want to be a major supporter of that, and I think this is the first step back in that direction. So, yeah, it's, it's exciting. Eddie spoke a lot about three fights this year, that being the plan for AJ, obviously as a business model and um, everything moving forward. I imagine you'd really be excited for that and that's something you can also get behind. Three big events and that's something that also draws the subscribers in. Yeah, for sure it does. Uh, but clearly boxing is a hard sport to plan in and around. So uh, we'll focus, as I'm sure AJ will, on April the 1st. April the 2nd onwards, assuming he comes yeah. through healthy and, and, and victorious, we'll, we'll look at what happens in the summer and at the back end of the year. Um, but yeah, I think the intention is for AJ to be more active under this design relationship. That will work for us. We want him out as often as he can. We want it to be a, a, a regular part of a very strong fight schedule um, in the UK, but also uh, packaged with our international content too. So as often as AJ can fight, we want to be supporting and broadcasting that. On the topic of the schedule, we've seen Matram's announcement. I'll touch on Misfits with you afterwards, mm -hmm. which we've just seen uh, the launch yesterday. We've got San Antonio for BAM. We've got Newcastle, Callum Smith in Liverpool. Um, Sheffield is a date waiting to be announced. There's more in there as well. But just in terms of first six months or first five months, Taylor mm -hmm. Serrano, a big mm -hmm. one, how can I forget? Um, happy with the schedule that you guys have put out? Happy uh, with the schedule, absolutely. And also happy that we've managed to announce a block. Yeah. I think um, we want to make sure that we're telling subscribers for a number of reasons, up front, what they're expecting to get on the zone. It's really hard in boxing to get beyond sort of 10, 12 weeks ahead of where you are day to day. Uh, we're always working with our promotional partners, with our teams to think longer term because there's huge benefit to uh, all of our business businesses around around the matchroom to zone relationship to announcing as far in advance as possible. So we've done that. Immediately we get into thinking about the second half of the year, the summer onwards. So there's no rest for the wicked. We get straight back into it. Um, but yeah, very happy with the schedule. Yeah. AJ Franklin and obviously Taylor Serrano stand out to me. Um, Taylor Serrano was the best fight of incredible. last year, an incredible promotion, iconic moment for a number of reasons, transcendent event. We want to make sure that we go bigger and better in May, and that's definitely the plan. Misfits, I was speaking to Mams last night. I know just how excited he is. First things first, that IB for one's going to be absolute carnage. I know how excited some of the media are for that one. But just in terms of the schedule that they've got in plan as well, I know obviously the crossover is what you're trying to do with both sets of subscribers. I know KSI is, is the pay-per-view star, but um, a real strong point for them and putting out the whole year in advance, like you say, necessary people have got the schedule in advance and they know what to look Just picking up on the Misfits schedule, yeah. uh, having that out a year in advance, obviously everyone knows what to look forward to. Um, also expanding into different territories. I know that Canada and Australia has been looking forward to for 2024 now. Um, just happy to give that. Yeah, look, I, I don't think there's uh, necessarily, we, we won't add to that schedule for Misfits. Look, Misfits and X-Series is, is a new product for us. It's a completely separate product away from our, our hardcore boxing business, our core boxing business. But we're really excited about it because it engages huge numbers of young people. Um, you know, that we feel can, can become very long-term to zone subscribers. We're excited about it. We want to have an international schedule that sort of goes in parallel to KSI in particular. He's got a global audience. Uh, we want to be in the US. We want to be in Canada. We want to be in Ibiza, as you mentioned. We want to be in Germany and Australia. Um, but it's got to, you know, we've got to build it gradually. Um, the, the possibilities with X-Series are, are tremendous. We're very excited about it, and we're thinking about what it can become. 
we've obviously got the, the tag team event um, in, in early March, which is uh, format innovation that we'll obviously uh, learn from and build upon. But I think you know there's lots of exciting inspiration from different types of entertainment that we can apply to the X series. And I think it's a really unique, innovative thing that we're building. So um, we're really excited about it. The venues sort of replicate that. There's not many boxing promotions that will go to Ibiza. Especially it, Ibiza Rocks. Ibiza, <laughs> uh, well, let's see about Ibiza Rocks. But a summer event in Ibiza will be, will be unique. It will be really fun. Uh, and we're looking forward to it. So look, X series is a, is a nascent business, but one that we feel has got huge potential. And we're delighted to be in business with, with Wasserman and Kala and Nissa and Mam. So we're, we're excited. Joe, I don't want to keep you for too much longer. Um, just on the price point, obviously mm. that's been adjusted. Um, Talk Online just spoke to Eddie about it now. So we've got the yearly price point that you sign up for and you can pay in a sum ninety nine ninety nine. I think that mm. works out at eight ninety nine a month or mm. whatever. Uh, then you've got the nineteen ninety nine flexibility option, which yeah. means you can come in, chip and choose as you like. Yeah. And then obviously you've got the option where you contract yourself for yeah. a whole year but pay in month instalments. Yeah. Just first things first, how did this come about and, and the reason behind the change? Well, listen, we've looked at our, our customer base in the UK, and for obvious reasons, although we're not just a boxing service, most of our content since we launched has been boxing-focused. And so the majority of our customer base are boxing fans, and they've been loyal to the zone. They've stayed with us. They've, they've um, had a long-term relationship, most of them for the majority of the time that we've been live in the UK, some of them even from the... Uh, the Billy Joe Saunders Canelo fight, which was our, our sort of first major event in the UK market. Um, we want to reward the loyalty that those customers have shown, and we want to make sure that we are giving them preferential treatment when it comes to pricing. So we, we've built the annual pass and the contracting uh, offer to serve that group of fans. As we get into more mainstream waters, AJ being a good example, we want to make sure that we are not closing ourselves off from the more casual, flexible uh, tourist subscriber, as it were, who wants to come in and watch uh, a big fight with his or her mates and then step away and not have an ongoing relationship with the zone. Clearly, for our business, uh, we want more of the former group of customers, that the longer term, more, more committed, more loyal customers. But you know, there are other types of customers in the UK we want to go after. So we've done a lot of homework, we've done a lot of sort of analysis, and we've looked at this. We've taken inspiration from other markets in which the zone works and we're very confident that this is the right pricing strategy you're right to say that if you're willing to subscribe to the zone for a year if you're a hardcore boxing fan you've seen the value and the continued uh, quality of schedule that we've that we've uh, built in the uk uh, that we've announced for the first five six months of this year um, in the last week i think the value that we all deliver to you week in, week out, month in, month out is very, very clear. And I think you know that we're working with the best promoter in the UK to deliver big events. Um, we don't want to close ourselves off any different types of consumer. We want to be open to the full UK sporting public. And this pricing strategy, I think, does that. Critics have mentioned about the ninety nine, uh, sorry, the nineteen ninety nine mm. on the monthly. I suppose you'll get back is that, like Eddie and yourself have just said, it is the rewarding loyalty. You want yeah. people who come on board with the zone to feel like they're a member and that they're paying to stay rather than just come and go. Yeah, listen, the vast majority of boxing socials audience will be regular hardcore boxing fans, people who are willing to go and watch YouTube videos about boxing. They care about the sport. They want to watch the sport. Uh, we will serve those people every single month with high quality, uh, regular quality programming and events and shoulder content. Uh, it's the best value play uh, in boxing. I'm very confident of that. We've done it in the US for five years. We've consistently built um, a very strong uh, user base. Uh, we're gonna do the same in the UK. We're obviously earlier in our journey, um, but I think the value that we offer um, boxing fans and sports fans uh, is, is pretty evident. Well, Joe, thank you for your time. Just finally from me, um, if I could just pick your brain sort of almost as a fan first before someone who's, who's doing their job here. We're seeing so much at the minute. Tank Garcia, mm. will it happen? We're here in final stages of the contract and then not. Uh, just on your side of things, how far are we from getting this fight over the line? Is it the fact that the rematch has to be on the zone, which I think a lot of people online do agree with? Um, Ryan's now said, like, let's just not bother with a rematch clause, etc. On your side of things, where are we at? I think that a really sensible deal was made at the end of last year between different entities in boxing, um, Tank's promotional team and advisory team, Golden Boy, The Zone, Showtime. Uh, we made a proactive outreach to Showtime to say, let's work together, let's make this fight happen. I applaud Stephen Espinosa for being open to that and, and, and making a deal with us. We, we need more of that in boxing. Um, the contract is obviously a 
complex thing. There's lots of different nooks and crannies in boxing contracts. It's more with the Golden Boy lawyers and the and the lawyers that represent Tank than it is the zone. Uh, we're obviously a stakeholder in the process, um, but I'm seeing those guys next week. I'm seeing Ryan next week. I'm confident we get through it and we can make a formal announcement. Clearly, the appetite for that fight is tremendous. It's a very, very big fight with lots of different audiences in the US engaged. Um, we're delighted to be a part of it. We want to make sure it gets over the finish line now. So from our perspective, we're pushing for it to happen.